This is the Temp Scribe, made in the 1960s by the Baccarat Company. It's a wind-up thermometer. It has a little arm that goes back and forth according to the temperature, and it comes with a little bottle of red ink. Open the door, load in the special circular graph paper, wind this baby up, and the little arm will draw a chart of the temperature over the course of 24 hours. This is an example of what they call a chart recorder, and there were lots of these back in the old days. Any kind of machine for gathering data which just directly draws it on the paper. I mean, before electronic data storage, this is basically the only way to do it. If you're going to gather data, how else would you preserve it? One of the simplest chart recorders is the seismograph. You just put like a marker in the middle of a chart and then attach it to a very delicately balanced thing. And then if the thing jiggles at all because of an earthquake, then that line is going to wiggle. And how big it wiggles is how big the earthquake was. It's not too hard to make a barometer into a chart recorder. That's called a barograph. You attach the marker onto some kind of squishy balloon or something that gets bigger or smaller when the pressure changes. Of course, there's the electrocardiogram machine, which draws a chart of electrical impulses in the heart, or even the polygraph machine, which is an embarrassing scam. These ones are called strip recorders because the paper is in a long strip. And then there's the circular chart recorder where the chart is drawn on circular paper. You gotta change the paper more often since it can only do one full rotation, but the mechanism is very simple. It's just a wind up clock type thing. My temp scribe has a little sticker with a date on it. So I'm guessing this one was made in the 1960s. But the design is much older than that. It was patented in 1936, and it looks pretty much the same as mine. Actually, my journey with the Temp Scribe is a bit fraught. I got this one on eBay. This model comes with the Temperature Probe, and it has seven day movement. That means you wind it up and it ticks down for seven full days before stopping. And the chart paper has a whole week on there, but the clock mechanism is jammed on this one. It's wound up all the way and it won't tick down. I tried taking it apart to see if I could get it to move, but an overwound clock is actually pretty dangerous. There's a long coiled spring at very high tension in there with no easy way to release it. If you open it up too much or you bang it in the wrong way and it's like one of these, only sharp and metal. So I went back to eBay and got another one. This one is the 24 hour model and it works great. It even came with the original bottle of red ink, which was another concern of mine. It doesn't have the nice clear dome on the front, which was a bit of a disappointment, but it's probably better for the video. Each of these things came with one sheet of the original graph paper stuck in there, and they both had old ink markings on it. You can go buy more original sheets on eBay, but you know I'm not about that. So I made my own. Click the links down there if for some reason you want to download and print them out. Okay, now I got my paper, my ink bottle, let's fire this thing up. On the little arm, what we got is a little needle, but what am I supposed to do with that? I expected some kind of fountain pen sort of thing, but this is just a plain needle, no inkwell or anything. So I go back to eBay and I notice that these used a removable pen attachment. And almost none of the ones for sale still have the pen on them. But since people still use similar things now, you can buy new little chart recorder pens. Nobody specifically sells new old temp scribe pens, but hopefully it's a standard size. It is not a standard size. All right, I'll just pull this out, stick this on here, put some cardboard in there so that it reaches all the way to the paper, and we're in business. The pen moves very slowly, which of course is kind of the point, but that means the ink bleeds like crazy if you use a normal piece of paper. I had to use a fancy sort of glossy paper. Anyway, I finally managed to get this thing working, and it works. I decided it would be fun to get some dramatic temperature readings, so I put it in my garage overnight. We should be able to see a swing down to lower temperatures at night and higher during the day. Well, this turned out less interesting than I hoped. I guess my garage is insulated better than I thought. All right, this time I'm gonna put it all the way outside. Let's wait another 24 hours. And this time I didn't wind it up enough. All right, try again the next day. There we go. This thing really works.
is a pretty simple mechanism inside. To get a look, you just remove some, but not all, of the screws. The arm is attached to this spring here, so it moves pretty easily. And this big metal coil will expand and contract when it heats up. And moving it just a little bit makes the arm swing out. You can also adjust the little spring directly to calibrate it. See, this screw head here is accessible from the outside. I never calibrated mine, but it seems pretty reasonable. I started out around noon on a sunny day, and the temperature reads around 80. That's Fahrenheit, of course. That's around 27 Celsius. This was in direct sunlight on my deck outside. There's a pretty noticeable dip in the afternoon. I think this was clouds coming and going. The rest looks kind of boring, but you can see a very gradual decrease in temperature starting around 6 p.m. from the mid-60s down to the mid-50s around midnight. And then around 8 a.m. it starts warming up back to the mid-60s by noon. Sounds about right. Hey, what if I wanted to know the average temperature over the course of that day? Average, you know, average just means you add them all up and then divide by how many there are. So, um... Actually, what does that mean in this case? This is an example of a continuous average, which you have to define using calculus. But if only there were a specialized instrument meant for measuring... Well, you know there is. This is the main and pretty much only purpose of the radial planimeter from a few weeks back. Check it out. The design of this thing is a strange mix of great and puzzling. The door has a cute little latch here. It's spring-loaded and you turn it to open but the spring is way too strong, and this knob is really small, so it's pretty hard to get it open. The choice to mount the drawing arm on the door is really smart. It means you can always easily swap the paper in and out, and the arm never gets in your way. And can we just take a moment and appreciate the graph paper itself? The curved lines going out from the center are really striking looking. I would have expected them to be straight, but they made them curvaceous just for fun. Actually, it's not just for fun. Just think about how this arm moves. It doesn't actually go back and forth, but it pivots and rotates. That means the appropriate movement of the arm from the center to the outside isn't in a straight line, but in these curvy curves. So geometrically, it kind of has to be this way. I like it. I really like the whole look of this whole thing. The rectangular base with the round top reminds me of an old Art Deco style radio. Or, I suppose more appropriately, an old clock, because that's basically what this is. You wind it up and it ticks down. Instead of two clock hands, it just ticks this little plug in the middle here. There are some annoyances in the clock mechanism itself, though. Some of this is specific to the particular model that I have. There's only one way to control the motion of the chart, and it's with this winding knob. You put your paper in there and you wind it up. But look what the paper does when you wind it. This is cute, but also bad. It means that you can't wind the thing while you're using it. Like an old clock, you set the time and you wind it up every so often to keep it going. But this thing, if it's already going and I decide to wind it just to make sure it's got enough juice in there, I mess up the chart. So why would they couple the winding with the motion of the chart like this? Well, that's actually the only way to position the chart. And you have to position the chart when you start it going, since it needs to read the right time. It works okay, but in practice, it's hard to get it just right. It has like individual clicks. I can leave it where it is, or I can turn it to the next click, which is all the way over here. It's about two hours later. And what if the spot I want to start at is in between two clicks? Well, I don't know. You can't just turn the paper a little bit since it's stuck on the plug in the middle. Maybe I could just like wait an hour, but that won't work since the thing's already moving now. There's no, like, pause button that would let me stop the mechanism until the real time catches up. This other one has an extra knob that solves this whole problem. On mine it doesn't work, I guess because it's overwound, but the knob is supposed to move the chart directly so you can fine-tune the position when you start it. On a seven-day chart, you better be able to position it just right. I guess they decided that it's not important enough for the 24-hour model. This thing is another good example of a technology that's mostly been made obsolete by computers, but only mostly. Of course, today anyone doing serious data analysis will want to collect and analyze everything on a computer. And the printout is just redundant at that point. But these things are actually still used today in lots of situations. They're used in factories and machine rooms. I heard from a guy who works with them in a brewery, another one in pharmaceutical storage. Some trucks have physical tachographs to track their mileage. And some other types of big industrial equipment ship with a round chart recorder built into the machine. 
So the mechanical chart recorder lives on. It's a legacy technology for sure, but it's pretty foolproof. And going digital can be a major project if you're not set up for it. So might as well keep on winding. Mm -hmm.